Hello craft warehouse beaters. So today we are going over needles. There are so many needles to choose from in our store um, and we're just going to kind of break them down so you know what they are used for and um, see which one's going to be best for your project. With that being said, I might prefer a hard needle where somebody else might prefer a big eye needle. So it is going to have slight preference, but breaking it down so you can see what they all do and um, you can kind of determine what's going to work best for you. So let's get started. Okay, so first off, we have our hard needles. So this is what I would probably start somebody out with. Um, we have them in both size 10 and 12. Um, I have one of the 12s open here. I want to bring it up to show you how tiny that hole is. So it's just going to be enough room to get some thread through. Now something else is it is a stiffer needle and it's just going to have a little bit of flex to it, not too much. Now for stringing material, I tend to use the wildfire with those guys. Um, it is thermally bonded, so the string won't fray on me. And I also have a good assortment of colors that I can work with on any of my projects. So we have our beetle on hard needles. We also have these colored eyed needles. So this is gonna give you a 10, 11, and a 12. And there's gonna be two of each and they are color coordinated. So both the 10 are gonna be black, both of the 11 are blue, and both of the red are 12. Now the tulip needles are by far my favorite. Um, we have both a long and a short number 10. Now these guys are a little bit higher on the price range. Um, they are made in Japan, but they have really, really good um, sturdy needles with just the right amount of flex I have found in my projects. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this. They come in a nice little container that's labeled. Another thing I like about these is the eye on these. I don't know if you guys can see that. See how it's just slightly bigger than the other one? So it's just a little bit easier to string my material in. Um, and I just love the feel of these. Another thing about these tulip needles is um, they are slightly cur or rounded at the end. So that's gonna help prevent your um, string from fraying and also um, won't be quite as sharp. Again, I just wanna show you these all again. These are what I would start somebody out with. Either our 10 or 12 size needle or again, this colored eyed um, set because you do get the three sizes in there and two of those needles. Now, if I was getting something for somebody who's a more experienced beater, I would definitely get this or for myself, I love these. Um, again, we do only have these in a size 10 though. So let's move to our next needle. Okay, you guys, our next needle is gonna be the big eyed needle. So I have two sizes here. I have a two and a quarter inch needle, and then we're gonna have a four and a half inch needle. Now I also have in that two and a quarter inch is gonna be a fine size. So I do really like this one when I have to do multiple passes through my design because the more passes and the more thread that ends up inside my little seed beads, um, the thinner needle I need to maneuver so I'm not creating too much tension where my bead may break on me. There's nothing worse than getting through almost at the end of a project and breaking a glass bead. And then we also have an assortment pack here. So it says assorted at the top, you're gonna have four sizes. So let's flip that over. This comes with a one and three quarter inch needle, a two and a quarter inch, a three and a quarter inch, and a four and a half inch needle. So you're gonna have really good variety here. The thing I love about these needles is I can use ribbon, yarn, parachute cord with them. Um, the, and if you are having a hard time getting your stringing material through your eye of your hard needles, this is gonna be a great alternative. So let's go ahead and dive into that a little more. Okay, so I do have the two needles laying out here just so that I can show you the different hole um, space. But instead of the eye, what you're going to do is you're going to want to be able to 
spread the two metal pieces apart. So these are gonna be soldered at two different points. So you have one at the top and one at the bottom. Now, you wanna be very gentle with these because I don't wanna just pull this because it will end up breaking my needle. But I've used these for a while and it takes a lot for me to break one if I ever, I don't even know if I ever have. So, um, one thing I also really like about these is I love using Nymo, but Nymo tends to fray a little bit too much on me. So I can just go ahead and stick that right through my needle once I get it open. And then all I have to do is pull it down to one of the ends and then just release. And then I can go ahead and pick up my beads to create my piece. Just slide them right on over. Now, when you are done creating, I wanna point out, if you just were to pull, try to pull that string right out, see how it's creating that tension and catching on the end? So I wanna make sure I move my string up to the center and then I can pull out or I can open it and pull the string out as well. Just wanna make sure you give your needle some care um, I do want to show off the larger one, just so if you are using other materials, this really does have a bigger opening, so um, it just is going to come down to preference. I usually don't struggle with the smaller ones, but if you are having a hard time still finding that opening, you can go ahead and just use the bigger four and a half inch needles. Again, these are our big eyed needles. You're going to have that four and a half inch, that two and a quarter inch. And we also have that in a fine needle. And then we have our, our assortment pack that has four different sizes. I do just want to point out and remind you guys that both sides of these needles are going to be extremely sharp. I would definitely say that these are our sharpest needles just because both of those ends can really poke you good. So please be careful. All right, so now that we are done with the big eyed needles and the hard needles, we're going to move on to our collapsible needles. All right, so these are our collapsible needles. Um, we do have four different ones. So we first have our big eye collapsible needle. We, and then we go into just our collapsible needle, our extra heavy, our extra fine collapsible needle, and then our variety pack, which has five different sizes. Again, these are going to be another great option for if you can't string material through your 10 or 12. Um, so if your string material is too thick or you can't see, I personally love using my B-Lawn for this. So I don't know about you guys, but I also really like to use a B-Lawn for macrame. And using these needles are amazing because they are flexible. So let's go ahead and take these out of the package and show you what we're talking about. I took one of the needles out of the variety pack. So this one's going to be on the sturdier side. And then I have my nice thicker cording that I can easily thread through the hole. One thing about these needles is I don't know if you see how there's that little loop at the top. So let's go ahead and just pull the cording. You pull it up and it's going to latch right there. So you don't have to worry about it coming out on you and you can start your beading. Now that I showed off the hard needles, the big eye needle, and the collapsible needle. We do have this variety pack in the stores as well. So I'm gonna flip it over so you guys can see what it has. So it has a 10 and a 12 size hard needle. It's gonna have a big eye needle, a collapsible eye needle. So if you have somebody who's starting out on beading, this could also be a really good uh, starter set because you kind of get a little bit of everything. Now I have the loom needle. This is gonna be a nice, long, sturdy needle. I have it right here in my loom. So this needle is gonna be 3.125 inches long. Um, I really enjoy these because I can get a good amount of beads strung on here before I have to put it on my loom. So if you have a really wide pattern you're working on. These loom needles are great for that because I can just load them all up. 
So I have these all loaded up now and I can just put them right up into my pattern, right up into my pattern and just pull my string through and then go right through the top side of my loom. And then what I like to do if I'm in the middle of a big project is I can just slide that right back in and it'll just hold its place there. These new belts are also really great for making a fringe. I do also want to show off, if you're having a hard time getting your wildfire in here, um, just take your pliers and flatten your end of your string. You can get that right through the eye of your needle much easier because this is going to have a much smaller eye. Um, but once you kind of give that little smush to your, your wildfire, you have no problems. And that's a jewelry loom bead. All right, let's go on to our next one. Our next specialty bead is going to be our curved big eye needle. So let's go ahead and open this up. Now you see this one used a lot with the spinner bead. So I'm going to just show you how that works. So you can go ahead and open up your needle. It's going to be just like the big eye. And just string your and just put your string through here. And then you're just gonna lock it in the bottom. Now this is also gonna be great. I do use um, wildfire with this a lot, but it'd be great for Nymo or anything that shreds. With this curved eye bead is it's great for this uh, spinner, but the trick is gonna be finding the sweet spot. So sometimes it takes a while. But once you find that sweet spot, it's just gonna pile your beads on there and then you can just push them down. So let's try that again. So you're gonna look for that sweet spot and it's just gonna put all the beads onto your needle for you. And then you're just gonna slide them on down. And then once you're done, just like the big eye needle, you wanna make sure you slide that string up and pull it out, just so you're not breaking anything on the needle. And that's your curved eyed needle there. Okay, our last needle here is gonna be the elastic cord needle. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this off. I wanna bring this up nice and close so that you can see that little hook on there. So this is metal that was folded, this metal piece was folded on top of itself and it is gonna be kind of weaker. So you need to be um, careful. You're not wanting to jam your beads over this or force your cording in because it can break. Now the max size I would use for your elasticity is at 0.8 millimeter. Um, I do think that the 0.5 millimeter works the best, but you can use this 0.8. And I'm going to show you how this guy works. So the best thing is this also is designed so you can use it as a, um, a design tool. So you can put whatever beads you want right on here. So if I had multiple sizes or colors, I could be designing that as I go right on to this needle. This needle is eight inches long. So I do have a seven size seven wrist and this makes the perfect bracelet for me. All right, and we're just gonna put a few of these on here just so I can show you how it works. So I have a little bit of cord here and you just want to make sure you give it a good pre-stretch and then I want to bring the elastic cord right in that loop. Now you can also use a longa and then all you got to do is slide your beads right over. And I am using large hole beads. Now, another thing is, if you kind of get caught up on a bead because all the holes are slightly different, just give it a good wiggle. You don't want to force it. 
Okay, what I like to do is keep this as a loop. So I'm just gonna pull the wire or the stretchy cord out. And then I just want to go ahead and make this nice and tight. And then what I do is go back around and through the loop. So I can make sure I'm making a nice tight knot. And then what I do from here is I'd wanna just go ahead and make that knot that they suggest on the back of your elastic cording. And that is the elastic cording needle. Again, you wanna use large hole beads on that because you gotta be able to fit it over that um, end eyepiece. But other than that, this guy is really great design tool as well. And again, you can use a longa on this needle. Okay, I'm gonna bring those needles in just to kind of show them off. So we have our hard needles. We have that elastic cord needle. We have our big eye needle, our collapsible ne needle. We have our variety pack, our curved eye big eye needle. Again, these all are great needles and can be used for so many different things. Hoping that this video showed you what the difference between all these needles are and hopefully you can figure out which one's going to work best for your needs and your project. Thank you for following along and happy crafting. Mm -hmm.